Hi, I'm Lance, and this is Unsilent, a speak series by No Stigmas that champions mental health advocacy and challenges the stigmas that all too often prevent people from getting the help they need. We're so glad you're here. And in today's conversation, we get to meet Chicago-based musical artist Nyla XO, who brings mental health advocacy right into her music. In the first part of this two-part conversation with Nyla, we start off getting to know about her, her background, some of her personal life experiences with mental health advocacy, and also her creative process. And we talk about this idea of patience and impatience and the impact it has on both her mental health and her career. We thank Nyla so much for sharing her story with us today and opening up about her own mental health experiences and her creative process. All right. Let's dive in. So my name is Nyla XO. Um, I am an artist here living in Chicago, and um, I just have been a very huge advocate of mental health, um, especially as a creative. Um, I have just really found the importance of incorporating it into my daily life and lifestyle and understanding, you know, what that um, looks like for me to manage that so I can be my best self possible. And so um, a lot of songs that I write about and things like that, they all kind of connect to my experiences and my journey um, in life and in mental health and all of that. When I was younger, um, I went to several different schools um, before I finally was in like junior high, then junior high, high school, I stayed in the same school. Um, prior to that, um, I did, I was switching environments a lot. Um, and so I had this constant like desire to just like, I don't want to, I don't know if it's to prove myself or just trying to fit in and find my groove, but into school. And so, um, I had a, a little awful little habit of, uh, lying a lot and trying to make myself just feel like, Hey, like cool kids, like, you know, let's this is something cool that I did and, you know, with twist stories around um, because I was just really in that place where I wanted to, you know, have approval because you're moving from school to school that you're like, man, you have to start over all the time. And so, you know, I, I probably somewhere in there, there is that idea because, you know, a lot of mental health is also, you know, acceptance of yourself and honesty. And I think if we were being honest at the time, you know, I probably wasn't fully you know, confident in who I was. And so that kind of manifested itself in that way. Um, and I was also very sensitive. I've always been extremely sensitive. Um, so, you know, kind of those things I think play in, you know, I would tell my mom, like, even at my, I would have tons of friends. Um, and, you know, my, my mom would say, you know, Nyla's coming home and crying and saying she doesn't have friends. And the teachers are like, what are you talking about? Like, the kids love her. Like, she hangs out with everybody. She's so outgoing. Um, but in my mind, I just had this idea, like I wasn't, you know, this enough or, you know, whatever that may be. So I've never explored that before. But yeah, I guess you could say I probably did have some little inklings of that. I always say, you know, like now that I'm married, I've been married for almost seven years now. Um, you know, you start realizing when, we, you, when you're with another person often and they're able to point things out about you that you never realized because you're like, I've lived with myself my whole life. Like nothing's wrong with me. Um, but the more that you have somebody as like kind of a reflection, you kind of see like, hmm, maybe this isn't like the ideal or it's just different, you know, sometimes you're just learning more about yourself. And so, um, you know, I've kind of had to work with the ebbs and flows of, you know, being an artist and what that looks like to, um, you know, have that journey of patience and understanding myself and, you know, trying not to be burned out often. Um, you know, my connection with like social media, it's very heavy because of, you know, what I do. Um, but sometimes that plays a lot in the mental health and being able to just put that thing down. Um, and so, you know, I'm constantly trying to find um, just ways to get myself motivated and up because there's some days where it's just like, you feel defeated. You feel like, what am I gonna do today? There's so many things to do, but I don't know where to start. Um, and so that can kind of play with your mind a lot. And so that's something that I would say I've struggled with um, probably like my whole professional career has been just really trying to manage that. And what does it look like for Nyla to have a schedule that works for her? What does that look like for Nyla to, um, you know, have, um, uh, I mean, kind of the same thing, schedule a routine or just a way to keep myself grounded in times where I don't feel creative, you know, not to put all of my attention and saying I am only creative, but what are the other things about me that I can um, tap into to help for my mental health? So it's been a huge this for many, many years, and I'm still trying to figure it out.
Well, I think, um, you know, being an entrepreneur in general um, and kind of being the only, you know, the ship only sails as far as I'm willing to go um, as an artist. And so a lot of times what that looks like is not having instant gratification. It's not like I clock into my job and I have my um, list and then I know that, hey, just by doing this by February, I have a promotion and I'm at the next level and my salary is increased and all of that. Um, and so it's kind of this tough place sometimes because um, it's, as I don't know if as humans in general, but I know I certainly um, like to feel rewarded for the things that I'm doing. And so sometimes um, it can feel like, man, I'm doing all of this stuff, but the rewards that I'm seeking are not always just like there right now. And so the patience really lies in being able to internalize and recognize that, hey, everything that you're doing right now is valuable. It is working towards a purpose. Um, keep going. You may not see the result right now, but keep on going because it's preparing you and knowing that if I don't do it, that I will not ever be where I desire to be. And so, you know, that's kind of like the, the tough thing. And, you know, even with social media, I try to, um, you know, not find the validation in that either because that can a lot of times i think cause that addiction because you get an instant like gratification of like oh somebody liked this or somebody thought that this was cool um but sometimes that doesn't always equal still the long-term goal and the long-term vision and so um yeah it's just really it's tricky it's tricky but that's something that i'm continuing to learn to just say okay embrace this journey and what you are doing is not in vain. For a while, actually, I speaking on social media. So there was a time that I really had a huge dislike for social media. And it was mainly because just the lack of like connection, like, you know, going back to, you know, people liking my stuff. I'm like, that's cool. But like, it's not doing anything. Like, I still am like, that's great that you liked it, but I'm not feeling the impact, you know, that you're speaking of. So um, like back in 2020, I started making the decision that when people follow me. I am going to message them. I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to say hello. And, you know, just start a conversation, find something on their page that I thought was cool and just find a way to connect with them. And in doing that, I was overwhelmed actually by the amount of like responses that I would get that were like, oh my God, I, you know, I followed you because of this, 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 this. Like, I really love this about you. I love your positivity. You inspire me. You do all of this. Or, you know, people who've been following me for a long time, they're like, wow, you reached out. And they're like, I've been obsessed because X, Y, and Z and things that I didn't even think about, you know, that I thought, oh, it's just because I sing a certain way that people enjoy what I do, but actually recognizing that people saw um, a kind of positivity about me or a light in me and something that I said that encouraged them, that was huge. And so I've more and more been starting to internalize that impact because I've opened the door for people to kind of communicate that. And um, I didn't expect it. Like, that's always what I hope. But I often don't think, oh, yeah, what's this post doesn't do any. I don't want to say this post doesn't do anything. But, you know, I just don't know sometimes. And so, you know, so it was um, I'm starting to recognize more what that looks like, you know, from a stranger level, from people who don't really know me so well and people who are fans of my music and things like that in the way that I impact them. Um, but I know with like my family and my friends that are in my circle, um, what that looks like is just being able to encourage the people around me and for people to see that, you know, she's really going after this or, um, you know, she doesn't give up and, you know, all of those things. And it helps inspire them and motivate them. And, you know, my husband is a huge factor in that, too. He's like a huge go getter, huge goal setter. Um, and so, you know, just seeing the way that our friends interact with us and just, um, you know, desire to kind of, you know, uh, I don't know what the right word is, but just that we can all kind of be in it together and recognize like, hey, we're going to push each other. What that looks like is not prioritizing the things that I know are healthy for me because I'm in a rush to get where I need to be. So it's almost like if you're running late and you are like, I need to run out to the whatever it is and you know you're running behind and so you are like rushing through the process and then in the way you don't look as good as you would have had you taken a little bit more time or maybe you get in a car crash on the way there because you're just so frantic and so um I think for me what that looks like is the times that I have 
been feeling like, oh, this is the end. Like if I don't do X, Y, and Z now, like my career is over. Like, you know, feeling in a rush to get there, I miss some very basic steps, you know, along the way. And so sometimes that means, okay, I'm not exercising like I should because I'm like, I have no time for exercise. I only need to do this. Right. You're sacrificing other things and quality of life, you know, and sacrificing, you know, maybe friends and family time because you're like, nope, we can't, you know. And so when you're impatient with the journey, you're feeling like you can't turn it off. You know, you have to kind of just keep up all the time. And that again, that just that burnout is just gives me anxiety personally. So that's kind of how that correlates with me, you know. And again, when you just accept that, hey, you know, it's going to take time. You don't have to be so incredibly hard on yourself to the point that the negative self-talk starts coming in and you're like, no, you're not good or you're never going to get there or you're taking too long or this, you know what I mean? So that's kind of how I, I pair the two is making sure that I don't sacrifice. And I many oftentimes do, and I'm trying to get out of that, of not sacrificing the things that I know bring me joy and keep me fueled as a person and mentally stimulated um, just for the sake of getting somewhere faster. Things that have worked for me um, obviously is exercise. I know we all say it, but it's just completely true. There's a reason why it's so one of the top things that I talk about when it comes to mental health is exercising and getting your body moving. Um, and for me, I have to do it first thing before I do anything, I get extremely distracted. And so I get excited very easily by things. And so if, you know, if something else in the morning pops up that I want to do, if I don't do that workout, I will not do it anymore because I have now stuck on this one thing for hours. Um, and so I think one of the most important things is to be able to regulate yourself and say no to yourself. Um, and, you know, again, with that instant gratification is like, you know, again, I might do something that excites me right then and there, but that then in turn has jeopardized the rest of my day. And so um, that might look like, you know, as much as I want to respond to a text message or an email to say, no, Nyla, that can wait. You said you're going to do that at this time. Later on, it's it's not a huge deal if you don't respond to this right then and there. Um, so I think sometimes just reshifting, you know, priorities, um, that's definitely something that I, you know, constantly do. Um, just being able to, you know, um, listen to things that inspire you and motivate you, um, whether it's in your field, whether it's just like watching other people's stories, um, that always kind of fuels a fire for me um, and just gets me, you know, back in check. Um, I often pray a lot is a huge grounding tool for me. Um, and honestly, sometimes just doing things, kind of what we were talking about earlier about doing things like creating just for the sake of creating without any kind of result in mind. And so, you know, especially for me, that just looks like, you know, writing a song or just playing around, not trying to be perfect, but just having fun, going back to having fun with the things that you do and not do it and saying like, okay, this needs to be a song that I'm going to put out, or this needs to be a song that I'm going to post. This is just a song for fun. If it turns out great, awesome. If it sucks, fine. You know, not everything that you create has to be for mass consumption. You know, it's like there can be things for you too. And that's good self-care as well it's just like do it you know if you feel like writing something write it you know um and so that um eating well and also just being surrounded you know by friends or family or whoever you know makes you excited and to be around um just making time for that i would say is huge you know just to step away sometimes to go beyond the show, be sure to connect with us on all social media platforms at No Stigmas. And you can always reach out at nostigmas.org to connect with us and see how we can team up together to champion mental health equity for all. Remember, to break these stigmas, we must be unsilent. We'll see you next time.